When a great idea strikes, write it down. If I've learned anything at all during my years here in the at t Archives and History Center, it's that. Everywhere I look, I'm surrounded by brilliant ideas. Some the result of exhaustive research, others the product of a sudden breakthrough or moment of inspiration, all captured here in the thousands of notebooks meticulously kept by the giants of science who passed through at t s labs. Take this notebook, for example, the oldest one here. It belonged to Alexander Graham Bell's assistant, Thomas Watson. On March 10, 1876, Watson documented details of that fateful first phone call, including Bell's words, Mr. Watson, come here. I want you. And then there's this notebook. Inside is a little diagram that launched a revolution in electronics and earned its inventors a Nobel Prize in physics. It's a sketch of this, the first working transistor. After two years of trial and error, the team that invented it came up with this design shortly before Christmas, 1947. When put to the test that Christmas Eve, it worked, and co-inventor Walter Bratton documented that success here. And take a look at this notebook, maybe one of my favorites. It belonged to a Bell Labs chemist named Calvin Fuller. His research on semiconductors during the 1950s led to the first practical solar cell, a wafer made of silicon with a trace amount of arsenic and infused with boron gas. Each of these bumps is a little piece of silicon taped inside Fuller's notebook. He filled dozens of pages with samples as he perfected the recipe used by fellow inventors Darrell Chapin and Gerald Pearson to create this in 1954, the first working solar cell. This notebook makes an appearance in the film you are about to see. An entry made on October 18, 1969, shows a diagram of yet another Nobel Prize winning invention, one that revolutionized digital imaging. It's called a charge coupled device, or CCD. The entry was made by CCD inventors George Smith and Willard Boyle. They'll tell you all about it in the film. And while they're at it, They'll remind you of the importance of writing things down. The invention and development of miniature solid-state devices have spawned much of today's technology. Computers, copiers, calculators, cameras. One important innovation is the charge couple device, or CCD, a versatile new type of semiconductor invented in 1969 by Willard S. Boyle and George E. Smith of Bell Telephone Laboratories. Their invention is finding growing use in a wide spectrum of engineering applications. For signal processing in communications, for information storage in computer systems, and for image sensing in solid state television cameras where the small CCD eliminates the need for the bulky vacuum tube and the scanning electron beam required by standard TV cameras today. I'm Bill Boyle. And I'm George Smith. The image that you see on the TV screen of both of us is being produced by this small CCD camera, which is directly in front of us here. This camera was made originally for a picture phone type of application. This uh, shows what a color camera is like when you make one using CCDs. Uh, you can look inside here and see these three shiny things down here. These are the CCD devices. And they get the three colors from a prism, which is up in this area here. And this can be contrasted to a studio color camera, which is shown up here. 
The CCD is designed to store and transfer information in the form of electrical charge. Here it is seen in cross-section. It consists of a piece of semiconductor material coated with an insulator. A pattern of metal electrodes is positioned on the insulator and every third electrode is connected to a common conductor. To show how the CCD works, we will slow down the action. When there is voltage on an electrode, a potential well forms in the semiconductor beneath it. In the case of the TV camera, the amount of charge that fills a well depends on the amount of light striking that area of the CCD. By applying voltage to the next electrodes, potential wells form under them and part of the stored charge shifts over to the new well areas. When voltage is removed from the original electrodes, the charge in their wells spills over into the new wells. And this process continues down the line of electrodes to a detector. For other uses of CCDs, such as memory, signal processing, and logic, charge enters one end by electrical means in the form of a telephone signal or computer input, for example, and is transferred then along the CCD, as we have seen, and is detected at the opposite end. One of the things that makes the CCD unique is its ability to perform specialized functions, such as acting as a camera or as a memory device, which can be used in computers or in certain kinds of so-called signal processing functions where we are using the CCD device for controlling the shape and quality of signals. We have an imaging device here, which is the sort of blackish square thing in the center which has 250,000 elements on it. This is a standard commercial size TV camera, or the sensitive element for it. Of course, you need electronics to run it. The uh, CCD, because of its uh, very uh, compact form, offers the possibility for having electronic memories of much lower cost uh, than we have today. The thing with uh, memory is to get it very small and, and compact and there are uh, 16,000 memory elements on this chip. Not only that, but we have also put on this little chip all of the circuit elements needed to run the memory chip. The uh, CCD offers uh, several advantages over the more conventional integrated circuits. Uh, first, it is much more compact in size. It is possible to arrange um, to have a CCD device perform a certain function in about one quarter the area of what would be required if we were using conventional integrated circuits. Another application is logic, which can be a very complicated function. What I have here is a photograph of our first logic chip, which shows a very simple function. What we do up on top here is to put in either a one or a zero, and on, on the bottom we get out either a zero or a one, or the opposite of what you put in. This is the very simplest logic function, and you may be able to see the individual plates down here which form the CCD capacitors. There are two rows of them down here. Of course, one has thousands of these on a chip nowadays in order to do very complicated logic functions. The last application, and perhaps one of the more exciting ones in my mind, is for analog signal processing. This is an analog signal processing chip here, which is just a delay line. To give you some idea of what this is, you can imagine a delay line. If you just put in an analog signal at one side, it takes a certain amount of time for the signal to go through, and you get out the other side. One very simple application here is to take a, a sound wave and, and uh, a, a delay the sound wave and add it to the uh, undelayed sound wave, and this sort of causes an echo effect. One can use this in a hi-fi uh, studio, for instance, in order to get some very strange effects. And you can do many, many more complicated uh, signal processing functions. These versatile devices had an unusual beginning. Where the innovation process often takes months or years, the conception and development of the CCD was startlingly fast. Well, back in 1969, 
when we first invented uh, the CCD, the silicon technology, which is the technology that we use in order to make these devices, the silicon technology is being used for integrated circuits. It was just sort of coming into its own in uh, large-scale circuit use. So all of the technology that we needed for these devices was there. All it needed was the concept. Then uh, one day, rather spontaneously, uh, George uh, Smith and I were having a discussion of possible new kinds of uh, devices, and we literally, uh, almost spontaneously, came upon the notion of using the uh, charge couple device principle uh, to be able to perform analogous functions to magnetic bubbles. The CCDs uh, were actually invented in about one hour. Uh, we uh, drew some diagrams on the blackboard, made some order of magnitude calculations to satisfy ourselves that our ideas were based on reasonably sound physical principles. Well, right after the initial concept, after this one hour of uh, invention, more or less, went back and wrote things up in a notebook as we were all trained to do immediately. Too many times good ideas get lost. And um, in fact, I have the original notebook right here, which is growing a little old right now, but the initial drawing that was made here, shown on this page, is showing a cross section of the device, is essentially still valid today. The basic device is still at the same simple way as it was described in this book. We decided to make a device. That took about three days to fabricate, and then we measured it and verified the uh, concept of this device in oh, less than a week. We felt very good about it. In this instance, to go from the conception of an idea to an actual operating device uh, was unusual, and I can assure you, uh, extremely exciting and satisfying. Well, the future of, uh, uh, of the CCDs right now are looking fairly optimistic. As I, there are devices on the market. There are imaging and memory devices and analog signal processing devices on the market. So it is possible to imagine using uh, the CCD for a range of new services, uh, possibly uh, for face-to-face uh, -face communication or for the transmission of uh, graphics information, facsimile information, and so on. So there are literally uh, hundreds uh, and dozens of possibilities for the use of the CCD in communications in the future.